Now, if you don't understand what recombination is, then you can watch several other videos on this channel to help you understand what they are and why they are important. Howdy, I'm Andy with Family History Fanatics. And I have a question from a viewer that was result of another video that I was talking about recombination. And this has to do with recombination in siblings. Again, I mentioned in a past video about recombination where the paternal and maternal chromosomes basically swap little locations. And that happens with each person. And so this viewer's question is, is it possible that each of three children could have a different set of recombinations. And I've got to stop her right there because that is not just possible, but that is a mathematical certainty. Other than identical twins, every sibling has a different set of recombinations. In fact, there's probably few, if any, recombinations that are even close to the same spot. Recombinations are usually going to be unique for each person. So let's continue on with her question then. And therefore, so as a result of these different recombinations, they have different inherited ethnicities in one family. I like this question because this person is starting to put together some of these different concepts that I've talked about in various videos. We know that recombinations affect which parts of DNA you get from really your grandparents. And we know that, for instance, if you had four grandparents who had four distinct ethnicities, you would be a combination of each one of those. The answer is absolutely. Because of those different recombination points, because you've inherited different parts of your DNA, and because the way that ethnicity results are in examined, interpreted, you know, calculated, however you want to do it, has to do with discrete amounts of DNA and the differences between them, you would actually expect any group of siblings that have disparate ethnicity heritage to then have different percentages and how it's distributed through the chromosomes to also be different. Now, let's not just answer that question, but let's actually go in and look at what that looks like. And for that, I'm going to use 23andMe. Why? Because I love their chromosome painting of your ethnicity results on each one of their chromosomes. So here is one of my brothers, B. Here is another one, P. Here's me. And here is my younger brother, J. Now, you'll notice as I flip through them, even though we are full siblings, we all have the same two parents, there are some similarities as well as some differences. For instance, let's start and just take a look at the percentages over here. We can see British Irish. My oldest brother is 73%. My next oldest brother is only 57.6%. That's actually quite a bit of difference. I am 79%, the most British Irish of them. And my younger brother is 67.8. So we vary between 57% and 79%. That's... 22% difference overall between the most and the least. If we go back and look at the next one, French and German, my oldest brother is 20%. My next older brother is almost double that, 39%. I'm a little less than that, 18.5%. And my younger brother is 18.8%. So again, we actually have, again, about 20% difference between my brother that has the most and me that has the least in this case. Let's go and look at the next one here. Well, this is broadly Northwestern European. I'm not going to worry about that. Finnish. My, one of my older brothers has Finnish. It's tiny 0.1%. Nothing for me. And the closest thing actually is for my younger brother is 1.4% Scandinavian. Okay, so, so he doesn't have Finnish. Nobody else has Scandinavian except for the younger brother. That is really interesting. And then we have this Eastern European. My younger brother has 1%. I've got nothing. My older brother's got nothing. And my oldest brother's got about 1%. As we're looking at each of the chromosomes, we can see this as well. Now, since most of our heritage, the, the dominant part of our heritage is European, all these are different shades of blue, which don't necessarily show up too well. But you can see up here, there's this a little bit lighter for the Eastern European. It's almost a green. 
And there's this little darker right here for broadly European. As we go to my other brother, the same darker one now is Finnish. It's see it there on chromosome number 12. For me, I have this blue, but I happen to have this little green right here, which is South Asian in India. It has Bengali Northeast Indian. You'll notice that my youngest brother happens to have a dark green right there, which also is another South Asian, not the same one as me, but it's in the same location. And certainly my older two brothers don't have that. Well, what's interesting is I can go over to the visual phasing that I've done. And now I don't have my fourth brother, my youngest brother in here. I am C in this thing. So this is me down here. What you will notice is, hey, right around where that green is, one side of our chromosomes, oh, we share the same. So it's probably not that side. The other side, I have a different letter. I have A1 than the other two. And so this represents where that green is. It's actually from my grandma's side because I know that my dad has it and his mom has that as well. So in this case, what we can see is that because of the recombination points, again, I've gotten this part of the chromosome would be from my paternal grandmother, whereas this A2 represents my paternal grandfather. My two older brothers got that part of the chromosome. And we're just seeing that from this. Knowing that, without having added my younger brother in to this visual phasing, because we happen to share this ethnicity coloring in the exact same spot, and I know that it is through my father and my grandmother, I can assume that he has this exact same part of my grandmother's chromosome in him. Now, his recombination points might be different. For instance, I have A1 through most of this chromosome, as you can see. He might have a break somewhere different than I do because they happen at different times and those recombination points are random. They're not determined by what somebody else's recombination points. So there's very little likelihood they're ever going to be in the same spot. So to answer this viewer's question, we can actually see how the ethnicity results from four siblings here with the same parents because of their recombination points, how they differ because they've gotten different parts of that DNA from each one of their grandparents. Now, if you don't understand what recombination is, then you can watch several other videos on this channel to help you understand what they are and why they are important. I mentioned visual phasing here. There is another series of videos there that you might want to watch to see whether or not you can do visual phasing to figure out what parts of your DNA you got from each one of your grandparents. Now, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And if you want to learn something more about DNA, then check out this video up top.